In the late summer of that year, we lived in a house in a village that looked across the river and the plain to the mountains. In the bed of the river, there were pebbles and boulders, dry and white in the sun, and the water was clear, swiftly moving and blue in the channels. Troops went by the house and down the road, and the dust they raised powdered the leaves of the trees. The trunks of the trees, too, were dusty, and the leaves fell early that year. And we saw the troops marching along the road, and the dust rising, and leaves stirred by the breeze falling, and the soldiers marching, and afterward the road bare and white, except for the leaves. This is the opening paragraph to Ernest Hemingway's novel, A Farewell to Arms. It is 126 words made up of four sentences. Only one of the words has three syllables, 22 have two, and the other 103 words have just one syllable. Deceptively simple, this excerpt perfectly encapsulates Hemingway's writing style and what made it so special. Before Hemingway, American writers generally followed British mannerisms, stacking adjectives and adverbs on top of colons and semicolons in the attempt to beautifully capture the essence of their story. But these long, detailed sentences came with a cost. They disrupted the natural flow of the story itself. In contrast, Hemingway wrote in simple, vigorous, unadorned prose, a style he began during his journalistic days when reporting facts quickly and succinctly was paramount. But the style was later honed and perfected in Paris through his relationship with Gertrude Stein, who based her writing on rhythm, rhyme, and repetition instead of plot. Hemingway was fascinated with this style of writing, which was inspired by the Cubism art movement, an art movement heavily influenced by the late work of Paul Cezanne and then pioneered by Pablo Picasso and Georges Braque. Cubism utilized repetition and small fractured pieces deliberately placed together in order to represent the larger whole. Hemingway used simple and formal language, avoiding description and decorative adjectives. By doing so, he believed that he would improve the story because the emotion evoked in the reader would be stronger and more authentic, not through the text itself, but through the subtext. Hemingway expounds on this method in his essay, The Art of the Short Story. A few things I have found to be true. If you leave out important things or events that you know about, the story is strengthened. If you leave or skip something because you do not know it, the story will be worthless. The test of any story is how very good the stuff that you, not your editors, omit. The omitted part would strengthen the story and make people feel something more than they understood. Hemingway referred to this as his iceberg theory. Similar to how only 10-20% to 20 of an iceberg is visible above the surface, with the vast majority hidden underneath, the iceberg theory describes how only 10-20% to 20 of the story is directly revealed through the prose, while the narrative's nuanced complexities such as themes and symbolism are integrated into the subtext and the structure of the story. This method requires the reader to sift through the remaining dialogue and visible narrative on their own. The character's thoughts and feelings are now left to the reader's own interpretation. They're meant to fill the gaps left by Hemingway's omissions with their own feelings in order to make a deeper, more thoughtful connection. Take this popular short story, for example. For sale, baby shoes, never worn. This short story is often attributed to Ernest Hemingway, but there's never been any corroboration linking the two together. Regardless, this short story perfectly highlights Hemingway's iceberg theory. Only six words, but these seemingly simple, deliberately chosen words evoke so many more questions and emotions in the reader, with their tragic implication. Now, let's take another look at the opening paragraph to A Farewell to Arms. Hemingway repeats words just as cubism artists repeated brushstrokes and shapes. The words river and white are used twice, dust three times, leaves four times. In the first two sentences, Hemingway establishes the beauty of nature, river, plain, mountains, the sun shining down on the pebbles, boulders, and the clear blue river. And in the last two sentences, Hemingway introduces soldiers into this idyllic setting. The very presence of the marching troops covers the trees and the setting with dust. The leaves have fallen early, the road now bare and white in their wake. This once beautiful landscape has been tainted. Hemingway wields gentle nuance as he connects nature and the effects of war together. Notice the motion he injects into his writing as well. The river swiftly moving, the troops marching down the road, the dust rising, the leaves falling. The battle of life and death is subtly introduced from the very beginning, perfectly establishing the larger themes within A Farewell to Arms. Hemingway's style of writing was direct and honest, rich with imagery, made up of deliberately simple yet powerful words. It's a style that is often imitated but never duplicated. But if you want to write like Hemingway, take this advice from Hemingway himself. Don't get discouraged because there's a lot of mechanical work to writing. There is, and you can't get out of it. I rewrote the first part of A Farewell to Arms at least 50 times. You've got to work it over. The first draft of anything is shit. When you first start to write, you get all the kick and the reader gets none, but after you learn to work, it's your object to convey everything to the reader so that he remembers it. Not as a story he had read, but something that happened to himself.
Tuesday is new video day here on Entertain the Elk, so if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe below. That way you can watch all the new videos when they drop. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and share it with your friends. When I first launched this channel, I didn't want to just do TV and film. I wanted to explore all things art, like literature, poetry, and paintings. So if you enjoyed it, please let me know. And if you did like this literature video and you want to see more, tell me some of your favorite authors. Who would you like to see me explore in the future? If you didn't see my announcement on social media, uh, Entertain the Elk just passed 150,000 subscribers, which is insane and uh, just exciting and mind-blowing. So I wanted to thank you all again for your continued support. Thanks for watching and commenting uh, and just helping build this channel into what it is today. Thanks again for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video.